Hello all, welcome back to Current Affairs Settlers series. I'm Guna Madhivanan from Offices IAS Academy. Today we are going to discuss one of the most important topic that is Digital Personal Data Protection Act. Digital Personal Data Protection Act. Friends, in the previous video, I explained basic terminologies which are related to this act. What is data? What is personal data? What is personal sensitive data? What is non-personal data? What is data principle? Who is data fiduciary? Who is data processor? Everything I have explained in my previous video. Please watch that before watching this video. Right? So this Digital Personal Data Protection Act, that is the DPDP Act 2023. It deals with processing. It deals with processing of our personal data. Which data? Digital personal data. My data, my personal data which are in digitized form that has to be protected and this particular act discusses about processing of that digital personal data. What is personal data? I have explained already in the previous video. Right? The data which will help to identify a person with some data, if you are able to identify a person, then that data is called as personal data. When that data is digitized, that data has to be protected. While you process the data, it has to be protected. So this act talks about processing of digital personal data. At the same time, this act provides the rights in protecting, rights in protecting the digital personal data. So it talks about two things, processing the data at the same time protecting the data. My data is being processed. I am giving my data when I open an account in social media. I, oh, I give my data when I am going to book some food in the food delivery app. I provide my data in various I um, say I open an email ID, email account where I give my personal data. All these data has to be protected. At the same time, there is a need for processing these data for various purposes. Both are important. Both are important. Right has to be protected. Right? At the same time, the need for the processing of data that should be also honored. Right? So it deals with these two things broadly. Now, which data we are going to process? As I said already, we will be processing digital personal data. We will be processing only the digital data, digital personal data. Okay, there is some data, today it is not digitized, but subsequently it is getting digitized. Then that data also has to be protected. That means the act is coming now. Now there are certain data which remains only in paper. Currently, it remains only in paper. If that information tomorrow, if it is getting digitized, if it is going to get digitized, my personal data, if it is going to get digitized, then that should also be protected. So my personal data in digital format has to be, I mean, whatever is in uh, digitized format, that has to be protected. Okay. Now, this processing, this processing should be done within India, should be done within India. Say, my data is with my social media handle. So my data is in that social media handle. If, let's say, Facebook or Twitter, whoever, if they are processing my data, the data processing should be within India. Okay. If the processing has to be done outside India, if the processing has to be done outside India, then that processing should result in some goods or services to Guna. That is data principle. Okay. Listen, I am data principle. I am having an account in social media handle. Let's say Facebook. Now, Facebook will be called as data fiduciary. I am called as data principle. Facebook is called as data fiduciary. Now, the data fiduciary is getting my data, they are processing it. That processing should be within India. However, that processing can be done outside India provided that processing is resulting in some goods or services. 
if that processing is resulting in some goods or services to the data principle to the guna facebook is taking my data they are doing some processing by processing that they are providing some service to guna if they provide some service to guna and guna is in india okay in this situation processing can be done outside so generally processing is within india sometimes it can go outside india and also when it goes to outside india government will give a list of exempted countries government will give a list in these countries don't do the processing leaving those countries for example pakistan china like that government comes up with a list in those countries the processing should not be done in other countries we can do provided when you do in other countries that processing should result in some good or service to guna right so this is with respect to applicability this processing is applicable this processing is applicable when it is a digital personal data processing can be done within india in outside india also you can do on certain conditions clear at the same time at the same time all these safeguard mechanisms all these safeguard mechanisms okay will not be applicable on certain cases all these mechanisms will not be applicable on certain cases it will be not applicable in certain cases when sir when it is not applicable for example guna i collect data of my family only my personal i mean my personal data my family's personal data right so let us say for my personal purpose or domestic purpose i collect data from my family members and i process it i do it for my personal purpose what my sister likes what my brother in law likes what my um, uh, parents like my extended family members like so their likes and um, uh, other informations i collect i process for my personal purpose that will not come under this act that is number 1 number 2 let's assume that you are having your social media information public your social media handle is public anybody can come and watch your information if it is public you yourself have made it public you are writing some article and you are making it public when you have given your data public in that case in that case this protection safeguard mechanism will not be applicable first case personal purpose your family members information you collect you process not applicable and you yourself reveal everything in social media and you are making your page public that information they will process you cannot expect safeguard mechanism under this act right similarly <coughs> if government through law is asking someone to reveal the information government through law it is asking okay uh, these individuals they have to reveal their phone numbers they have to reveal their uh, information public if a law is saying that it has to be revealed when that data is being processed you cannot expect any kind of safeguard provided in this act this is applicability okay next is consent consent let us say if a data fiduciary that is the social media handle or anyone anyone okay if they are going to process my data they have to get my consent they have to get my consent they have to explain they have to give me a notice first guna i am going to process your data for this purposes please give me your consent only after me giving the consent they can do the processing in between if i feel that if i if i get some doubt if i am not comfortable with the, they processing my data then i can withdraw my consent i can withdraw my consent in the middle i can withdraw my consent before they process they have to get my consent if i am not okay i can withdraw the consent these consents will not be required in certain cases in which case the consent is not required say you have made your information public already they will not ask your consent you have made your information public already they will not ask your consent similarly you are getting some benefits from the government government wants to process for example through direct benefit transfer you are getting some benefit from the government now you are data principal right your data is with government the government is data fiduciary okay so government when they process your data they need not get your consent listen when you when you are deriving benefits from the government 
then government need not get permission to process your data right that is the second point similarly when there is a medical emergency if a government wants to say covid came now government wants to process the data so much of data government has collected during this covid in this covid portal we have given our aadhar we have given our health status now government wants to process to handle that medical emergency they need not get your consent similarly for creating employment jobs or something related to employment government need not get your consent so understand in certain cases consent is mandatory in certain cases getting consent before processing the data that is not mandatory so we discussed about the applicability of this act we discussed about the consent with respect to this act now let me explain now let me explain about now let me explain about the rights the rights which are given the rights which are given uh, to the data principles that is me my data is collected right what are the rights given to me so we have discussed consent they have to ask my consent second thing let us say if i want to amend my data i have given some data the data is going for processing i want to change my data yes data can be changed no problem now you want to delete your data for example you are having uh, information posted in your social media handle now you want to delete the account but the data the social media will be having right you can ask that social media handle to delete your data from their server you can ask to delete your data right so you can change the data you can request to delete the data or you can even you can even set up a nominee you can even set up a nominee for example for a certain period of time you are not in a position you are not in a capacity to handle your page you are giving it you are you are giving it to a nominee an admin assume assume that you are going inside a big boss house 100 days you cannot come outside now your social media handle is managed by an admin the admin is a nominee nominee wants to change delete right the nominee can do provided you have to give that this person is the nominee right don't write big boss house as the example in the exam imagine if someone who is not able to deliver he is not having the capacity to deliver certain actions then we can nominate someone on behalf of you someone can do this uh, or exercise their rights uh, regarding the uh, data principles okay so all these are uh, rights given to the individual individual or data principle we can say data principle data principle is the person uh, who owns the data okay at the same time there are some duties there are some duties given uh, to the uh, expected from the data principle what is the duty see you should not give any false information you should not give someone else information you should not give someone else phone number right when you are giving some data for a particular purpose you are opening a bank account you have to fill kyc norms all these norms are digitized now you are giving digital informations right in that time you cannot give someone else address you should not give someone else phone number you have to give your uh, correct information right that is duties at the same time if you want to raise a complaint against a data fiduciary if you want to raise a complaint against a data fiduciary then that complaints that complaint should not be false it should not be a fake complaint so if you are giving a fake complaint if that is known then you will be imposed a fine of 10000 rupees these are the rights and duties we performed by a data principal now what are the obligations on data fiduciary what are the obligation on the data fiduciary side that is the organization who is collecting the data atel uh, whatsapp facebook what is their obligation number 1 they have to maintain the accurate data they have to ensure the correct data they have to maintain proper correct data number 2 they have to take efforts to safeguard your data they have to take efforts to safeguard protect your data and number 3 if there is any data breach i have given data to facebook there is some data breach in facebook then they have to immediately report that information to data protection board data protection 
board all right what is a dpb i will explain in the next uh, slide okay so accuracy that correctness has to be maintained safeguard mechanism to protect the data data protection board i mean if there is any data breach immediately pass on the information to the data protection board and if this fiduciary when they obtain the data to process something once the processing is over once the data processing is over then the data has to be removed eliminated deleted the data should not be stored the data should be removed data should be removed after the processing but all these all these these conditions will not be applicable will not be applicable when government say for example this removal once the processing is over if you want to remove after the processing we have to remove it that removal you cannot expect the government to do government is exempted they can store your data they have got socio economic caste census data the socio economic caste census data using that government find they process the data and they find out the beneficiary socio economic caste census for all the one particular people we are collecting assume socio economic caste census will not collect for one party for it is not a population data don't confuse population census it is a head count of all the uh, people in india socio economic caste census it will not be done for every individual we will discuss about the topic separately but we are getting lakhs of data using that data we identify the beneficiary we identify the beneficiary clear so beneficiary identification is processing we identified so shall we erase the data shall we remove the data shall we delete the data no government will store it if it is government government will store it right so this is not applicable for the government clear now there are some exemptions there are some exemptions exemptions to the rights exemptions to the rights of the data principle and exemptions to the obligation exemptions to the obligation of the data fiduciary my rights are sometimes exempted similarly the obligations of data fiduciary that is also sometimes exempted see when there is a law when in which condition when there is a law right which is asking you to reveal your information you cannot expect this uh, dpd uh, dp act to come and protect if there is some investigation if there is some investigation going on the investigation needs data to be processed that time the law enforcement agency cbi right they want to process the uh, travel history of people uh, uh, who are, who have traveled uh, outside india india they see let's say for example one criminal who committed a murder he escaped to some other country now to identify that person we need to process the data so from the airline authorities will be collecting the data the cbi is going to process the data in that time we cannot expect cbi to follow all the conditions given in this act they are exempted to pro to investigation exempted to protect the uh, security of the nation exempted to maintain public order exempted on these conditions there are exemptions on the rights and the obligations part of the data fiduciary now this data protection board data i know it's a lengthy video but it's very important so please listen uh, data protection board so as per this act central government will create a data protection board which will have members what these members will do they will monitor the enforcement of this legislation they will monitor whether the provisions of this uh, uh, act has been adhered they will monitor whether the data fiduciary is following the safeguard mechanisms if there is any grievance there is any grievance the data principal or data fiduciary when they have grievance they will approach this data protection board they will investigate and they will impose penalty do you know what is the penalty if let us say i am saying let's assume facebook if they fail to maintain my data if they fail to safeguard my data then as per this act up to 250 crore rupees worth of fine can be imposed so data protection board will do the investigation they can impose such huge penalty All right and you want to appeal you want to appeal from the verdict given by this data protection board yes you can also appeal you can also appeal 
right so these are the provisions of dp dp act i have given everything in these slides what is the aim of this act it recognizes the right of individuals it recognizes the need to process so applicability where it is applied where it is not applicable i have given here we can go through right consent in which case you need consent in which case you need not get consent i have given here similarly the rights and duties of the data principle rights i have given duties i have given all right obligations of the data fiduciary all right you can go through similarly when the data is processed outside what is the uh, conditions which we have discussed already exemptions i have given in which situations the rights can be exempted the obligation of the data fiduciary can be exempted that i have given here data protection board of india what is their role we have discussed i have given here any appeal against the verdict given by this dp b that can be taken to tdsat that is telecommunication dispute settlement and appellate tribunal so data protection board is giving a verdict they are they are putting 250 crores of penalty on a particular data fiduciary then that data fiduciary can take the case as appeal appeal can be taken to tdsat right the tdsat is telecom dispute settlement and appellate tribunal which was set up in the year 2000 which will adjudicate the disputes related to telecom broadcasting with respect to airport tariff with respect to information technology act okay so there is a tribunal which is already listening to certain cases that tdsat will be the appellate tribunal for this data protection also right so penalties i have explained i hope you got some clarity friends there are some issues in this act this act is actually diluting rti certain provisions of this act is diluting certain provisions of right to information act and there are some other issues which are being criticized by the experts how it is diluting the rta act for that we should know what is this rta act so in my next video i will explain about rti then in the upcoming video i will be explaining about how how this dpdp is actually affecting rti and what are the other issues in this dpdp that we will be discussing in a separate video now this is the framework of this act i hope you got some clarity i have given a multiple choice question find out the right answer and give it in the comment section right friends tomorrow i will see you with another interesting topic till then bye take care